All right. So in this section, we are going to discuss about another application of differential equation. Another application of differential equation is population growth and decay or radioactive substance decay. Now radioactive substance decay means so you have this radioactive substance. It's going to decay over time. Now we can model this by differential equations and that is what we have here. And this is the simplest differential equation model that you can get. Okay, so this is the differential equation and A, we call it the D. It's the dependent variable. It is the amount of substance that is left after time t. Now, this is a very important thing. It is not the amount that is decayed. It is the amount left after the radioactive substance decay. Okay. And simple t is, of course, the time. And the other thing is we have this k, which is the proportionality constant. or oh, it's a constant k. And it represents the decay rate. Now, think about this. Since this is a decaying problem, we get our k to be negative, okay? And when we look at this differential equation, this is a linear differential equation. We talk about the linearity with respect to the dependent variable. So here we have a, the dependent variable and its derivative. All of the powers of them are one, degree are one. So they are linear. They have been multiplied by constant so this is a linear first order differential equation and the other thing is here this is an autonomous differential equation because the right hand side is only made up with dependent variable or you cannot see the independent variable here explicitly now what I want to do first here is to show you how to solve this problem well we can solve this differential equation easily using separation of variables so we have the differential equation and let's separate the dependent variable to the left take dt to the right let's integrate so here you get natural log a now i don't write natural log absolute value of a because of course an amount cannot be negative okay so there's no point of using absolute values so if you integrate with respect to t k is a constant so you get kt plus c c is an arbitrary constant now let's take the exponential of the other side so we get amount after time t is e to the kt plus c let's call it c sub 1 okay now we can rewrite this as a t is equal to e to the k t e to the c sub 1 so i can break up this plus e to the c1 is an arbitrary constant since c1 is arbitrary constant so let's call it c altogether so we get our solution for the differential equation c times e to the kt now this is the solution for the differential equation given here all right now the other thing is that let's say an initial amount is given so let's say this is an initial value problem the amount that initially you had let's say it's a sub naught okay now let's see what happens when you substitute t is equal to zero the amount will be a naught so c e to the zero so actually you can see c is a naught so this constant arbitrary constant is actually the initial amount so then we have the complete solution for the initial value problem like this now one thing important usually in these problems sometimes you will be not given the initial amount okay so initial amount will be not given so at but it will not affect to your computations i will show you that in a minute but you have to guess your initial amount to be like a sub naught if it is not given explicitly all right then let's talk about half-life half-life means so we are discussing about radioactive substance decay half-life means the time that it takes for a radioactive substance to become half of its initial amount so initially you have a naught how much time does it take this a naught to become a naught over to half that time is the half life okay so 
That's a concept. We can find the half-life of a radioactive substance using this model. Let me show you. Let's look at an example. So here in the example says, a scientist found that a new radioactive substance, alpha C, um, and then after 10 years, it is found that 0.05% of the initial amount has decayed. So 0.05% has decayed. Find the half-life. Okay. All right. So let's solve this problem. Now here, if we gather the information from the problem, we know the solution for this differential equation look like this, right? Okay. Let's keep that in our mind. It says, after 10 years, okay, amount after 10 years is, it's decayed from, it's decayed by 0.05% from the initial amount. Now see, in this question, the initial amount is not given explicitly, right? How do we know how much left, right? Because A is what is left after time t. Okay, what is left after 10 years? We don't know. But we can find that. It says, let's say initial amount is A0. From A0, 0.05% is decayed. So how much decayed? 0.05 A0 over 100, right? Because of the percentage, I divide by 100. So actually, this is how much decayed is 0.0005 A0 amount is decayed. So how much you initially had? A0, right? So how do you find how much left after 10 years? Well, if you decayed this much, if you had initially this much, then subtract both of them, right? So A0 minus 0.005 A0. So if you subtract, you get 0.9995 A0. This is the amount that is left after 10 years. Again, we don't know initial amount. Okay, we treat it as A sub no, but after 10 years, using the information, we know this much is left. Now, hang on a minute. We are looking for the half-life, right? Why do we need this 10-year detail? Think about it. So, what is half-life? The time it takes the amount to become half. So, A0 over 2 is the half. Of the amount a naught is the initial amount now you need to solve this equation for t right but can we solve this equation for t no because we don't know k we don't know a naught but we don't know k also now look a naught doesn't matter because in this equation it cancel out that is why they don't give the initial amount explicitly actually we don't need it because it cancel out so all we need to to find half life is we need to find solve for t but we need k for that because without knowing k we cannot solve for the time now this is where we need this information okay let's see how we can use that information well now after 10 years we are left at 0.9995 a naught a naught e to the 10k right we know after 10 years this much left so see a0 cancel out again proving that initial amount knowing initial amount explicitly doesn't matter so we have 9995 is equal to e to the 10k now we can solve for k right we can take natural log of both sides 5 ln e to the 10k now we can take 10k in front of natural log by logarithmic properties 9995 now ln e is 1 so k is actually natural log 0.9995 over 10 right when you divide by 10 this is k now think about this now we know k we can substitute that k here in this equation and we can find the half life right so here assume that you know k okay so let's take the natural log of both sides natural log half natural log e to the kt so let's take kt in front of natural log so natural log e now is one so this is one ln half so t is actually what we divide by k t is ln half over k now don't we know k 
we know okay we found it right so we can use the calculator l in half divided by this term will give you the number of years that it takes for this alpha c to become half of the initial amount even though we don't know the initial amount explicitly okay so my note proves that says um it take 13 uh, and 860 years to decay the initial amount to half or the half life is 13 and 860 years okay all right thank you